So this is, um, again, this is page 363. This is, what is this, 8? What are we on, 8-8? Eight, eight? No. Yeah. Are we on 8-8 eight, eight already? Yep, 8-8. Eight, 8-8. Eight. Eight eight. So again, this lesson is, is essentially um, titled, um, it's about scaling and determining whether one type of fraction is larger than another. Let me give you an example here. If I wrote uh, 7 eighths, and then let's say there was a box for me to put in um, less than or greater than or equal to, it's going to be one of these. And I put 3 quarters right here. Whoops. 3 quarters. How many of you think you could put the correct symbol in the box here. Just let me see a show of hands. So about half of you or maybe a third of the class is pretty confident. Let me show you one way you can do this if you struggle with um, determining if one fraction is larger than another. I'm going to draw two lines here. They're going to be roughly the same length. And so right here would be zero. And right here would be 1. And since we're, we're talking about fractions, it's going to be everything in between here. Because uh, a fraction general, generally, not always, generally is less than 1. So right here would be half, 1 half, 1 half. And um, let's look at the 3 quarters first. OK? This is what we're going to look at, 3 quarters. So here's my number line for 3 quarters. I'll call this, this is going to be what? 1 quarter. And then most of you would know by now, this would be 3 quarters right here. So that's where it would fall on the number line. Now I have another number line right below that. And I'll have that represent the 7 eighths. And so I need to divide this line up into eighths. So first thing I'll do is the quarters. That kind of makes it easy. And then what's half of a quarter? An eighth. An eighth, yeah. So my eighths would go right there. And so this number is seven eighths. So I would just have to count over seven eighths. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right there would be seven eighths. Okay? And you can look and see that the 7 eighths is a little bit closer to 1, Ms. Shields, than the 3 quarters. So that would mean as far as the symbol in that box, 7 eighths is greater than or larger than 3 quarters. Now, this is, you know, that would, that's, can be kind of time consuming, but I just wanted to show you guys one way to determine if one fraction is larger than the other. Now, if the fraction happens to look like this, let's say 12 over 10, anytime the numerator, what's on top, is larger than the denominator, what's on bottom, then it's greater than 1. That's representing something larger than 1. And just like we did that little exercise where somebody sit on a table and then you squat up or down or get on your toes, um, a number times a fraction that's larger than one, that number will get larger. And if a number, whether it's one or two or 57, times a fraction that's less than one, that number will get smaller. Let's look at number one. It says, why does multiplying by three and a half increase its value? Well, because, and then it'll give you much room here, because three and one half is greater than one. Really, that's, that's the simplest answer. Any number that you'd multiply by another number that's greater than 1, it would get larger. 
So I did that one for you, so you guys could do number one. Number two, uh, you guys could do that. It says, which of the following are less than eight? I'll let you guys figure that out. I'm not worried about um, three, four, and five. You can put a line through those. But I do want you to do all of these. I don't know if I'll get around to a homework video tonight or not. We'll see. i got a lot going on. Um, 1819. Let's put a line through those. I'm not worried about those. Um, you guys could do 20 and 21. Let's look at uh, let's look at these for a moment. First one I'm going to do is the first part of 21. It's three over three times one third. This is what I'm doing right here. Okay, well, what's another way of saying 3 over 3? One. 1. If I had to put 1 in a fraction, I would just put 1 over 1 times 1 third. Then you just multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Anything times 1, you know, is itself. So this is 1 third. Then I'll do uh, 4 times 1 third. So 4 times 1 third, that's what I'm doing next. So I would put 4 over 1 times 1 third. Can't do any cross canceling, something you learned about the other day. So it's just going to be 4 over 3. All right. So I could leave it as 4 over 3. Another way of saying 4 over 3. One and one third. All right. Um, then I'll do two and two thirds. Two and two thirds times one third. Okay. That's what I'm doing next. Well, I'm going to convert two and two thirds. This is a mixed number. I need to turn it into a fraction. So. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8, so it's going to be 8 over 3 times 1 third. Which is 9 over. No, over it's not 9, it's 8 over what? 9. nine. So I can put that down here, 8 ninths. Last one I'm going to do is the 2 and 1 third times 1 third. So 2 and 1 third times one-third again. And you can see that this is going to, some of these it might take you guys a little bit of time to do this. This isn't something you want to wait and just do in the morning. So two and one-third, well two times three or three times two is six plus one is seven. So it's going to be seven over three times one-third. That's going to be 7 over 9, or 7 ninths. So um, there you go, 21. But what are they asking you to do? All I've done now is converted them into fractions. And they're asking you to um, list them from greatest to least. So whichever is the, the largest fraction, you would list that first. And then whichever is the smallest, you would list that last. All right, let's go to the next page. Look at that for a moment. 22. You guys can do 22. You can do 23. Uh, I'm not worried about 24 or 26. Uh, or 25. But... Go down to the bottom and let's see here. Um, not worried about 28, but I do want you guys to try 27. Okay. All 
All right, I think that about covers it. I want you guys to quietly work on that for a few minutes.